Hello, hello Ramblers, hello YouTube. Welcome to devlog number seven, um, in which I will talk about what happened in the past two weeks and what will happen in the next two. And also something magical happened, not in regards to was it poison, um, but in regards to Duru, our previous project, which is a game about morals and depression, and you can play it on Steam if you like. Last time I talked a bit uh, about that I want to jump back into Godot and try to figure out the mechanics of the game. And I did that and I went a little bit mad about some drag and drop mechanics I wanted to uh, include. Since we're using Godot 3 and not the newest version because we want to use, you know, the long-term support version, which, has, uh, which says it's more stable. Um, there are some things that are fixed in the later version, like in Godot 4, but not in 3. And I'm discovering all of them, <laughs> it seems, because I encounter a problem and then I Google for an hour and then I see, oh, that's there and not in the newest version. But, you know, as long as I find that out, um, that it's not a bug on my side or, you know, a misuse of some function or whatever, it's, it's fine. I can work with it. I just we're happier if it's not an hour of googling but five minutes or so. <laughs> I did something and then I was like it's it's not working. <laughs> this is not what I want and I don't believe that will be fun. I don't know, I had a little episode in the kitchen with a boyfriend <laughs> after after dinner. And we have a whiteboard in our kitchen because we are both kind of forgetful and when we run out of something we just note it down on the whiteboard. Um, not this evening. <laughs> um, my boyfriend is, a, among other things, a UX designer. Um, so I was like, he, he can give me some input or at least he can listen to my rambles. Um, and we worked this out. <laughs> and then I was like, this whiteboard is too small. <laughs> and I went to, you know, this whiteboard. <laughs> And this is where we continued and basically what we did, um, we went back to a previous idea I had, um, which I can show you in the mirror board. And I'm not sure what the problem was when I was uh, working on it. Um, but yeah, basically <laughs> I then took that and went into Godot and uh, I will show you <laughs> what it looks like now. First had, you know, a drag and drop mechanic and how I imagine it is was you have basically timelines. I mean, this is very basic, but stick with me. You had timelines um, and then you were to fill them based on statements from characters. So you were to go like, oh, they happened. <laughs> Oh my god, it's Unity all over again. So, <laughs> I will just talk and I will not click, because maybe when I implemented the, um, the current version of how things should work, uh, maybe I destroyed something. So, you had timelines and you uh, extract them based on statements from characters and then you can see, oh yeah, first they did this and they did that and then the murder happened and they said they were there but that doesn't work out with what they said before. You know, you get the idea. But even when we had nice graphics and you know, the icons filled with uh, characters and places, I felt like it would be a bit, it, it can be a bit tedious maybe? So basically what I did, I um, created this <laughs> little prototype um, and this map. Since I was not okay with uh, just, uh, you know, a few boxes, I went into, um, I went into a map maker for pen and paper RPGs and I just, you know, created this little map. And my brain was already like, I have to create, you know, this whole mansion where the first uh, chapter takes place. Um, but then I had to, you know, contain my, <laughs> my excitement and my need to do everything at once and just go for the relevant rooms. 
All right, and what you can see is the soon to be timeline we have here. So we have like slots for that. And at one of the slots, you know, the murder takes place. And how this is hopefully gonna work is that you go through your statements from your characters and you see, oh, uh, they said they were here at that time. And then you go ahead and place a marker here. Um, and afterwards you go to the next time step and place another marker like here, for example. And this helps you visualizing what was happening, like the recreation of the crime line when you have other characters that move through the house. And for example, if, you know, Persephone moved from the dining room to the terrace and Beatrice moved from the salon to the kitchen. And in their statement, they said that they didn't see each other. You know, one of them is lying. So this way you can deduce what happened and going from there, who murdered um, Ruben in this case. So yeah, I'm excited about this one. <laughs> I'm still a bit scared about creating the timeline and making the icons move around. Be my task basically for the next two weeks. You saw already the little icons um, from characters that I think we didn't see before. <laughs> so Verena went ahead and uh, scribbled and sketched out some characters for um, you know, the characters that are important for the first case, which are Ruben. <laughs> he is, um, I have no idea how this is called. I think it's like a, a moshus deer. <laughs> moshus. It's like a saber tooth deer <laughs> and they look cool. So that's what he is. Um, we have Beatrice, who is a beaver, and she um, has a wooden hand. Uh, we do not know yet how, you know, she lost her real hand, or if she was born this way, or how it came to happen. Maybe that's, you know, one of the character side stories to explore, if you um, yeah, want to befriend or date her. We have Felix, who is basically a upstart poet who wants to you know dive into the world of poetry and be a writer and be a poet um, and uh, yeah I will show you the versions <laughs> that Rulina created and basically um, how this works how this works is she makes the first sketch based off my description of the characters then I you know give feedback then she does another sketch and then feedback again and mostly most of the time after three um you know three feedback loops three sketches uh, we land where we want to be <laughs> also out of, out of those that you you know have the options currently which one would you date <laughs> i have to say i'm madly in love with the main character <laughs> Um, um, and how how Verena painted her. Maybe we need an option to date yourself. <laughs> also, with Felix, I'm not I'm not sure about the name. <laughs> um, Felix is one of these um, how are they called? These cute sand cats. They are like very tiny, very plushy, and very cute. But they are also very good hunters. <laughs> so if you have um a suggestion what we could name felix because you know none of the names are final they are basically the first thing that pops into my mind when i write characters yeah let me know <laughs> something that happened in the past couple of days is that we got nominated for the uh, german developer award for best game beyond entertainment we are one of three nominees and we're happy. We're very, very happy. And we, yeah, we hoped for it. I <laughs> didn't expect it when we applied. Uh, but yeah, it's it's great. Um, the German Developer Award, you might know it if you followed us for, you know, a couple of years. <laughs> it's uh, this, this thing here. We got the uh, German Developer Award for young female developers. Um, I think it was two years ago. 
I think. I think it was two years ago. It was COVID time, so it has to be two or three years ago um, because it was an online event. Um, yeah, <laughs> and uh, it's it's like it's like full circle. We are back with the finished product now. Um, and yeah, let's see. The other two are Berlin game developers as well. So, you know, if <laughs> if either of us wins, um, I'm I'm happy. You know, <laughs> happy for Berlin, which is apparently the city for games beyond entertainment. So we will be in Cologne on the 7th of December. So that is the day where you have to cross your fingers and you don't have to let go until after the award show, <laughs> which I hope will be streamed. So uh, yeah, um, I'm yeah, very excited. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, to everybody um, who supported us already. <laughs> Just being nom nominee is, is exciting and I'm so happy. <laughs> So now I rambled on a bit. So what will happen in the next two weeks? I will be working on the timeline, crime line mechanic, um, but I'm not sure how much I can get done because I have some workshop days in November and also I need to write a chapter for a book, <laughs> uh, which is also something I didn't expect I would be asked to do, but here we are. Um, and yeah, it's basically um, a collection of essays about games and psychology. Yeah, and I will be writing a chapter about Duro and how to create such a game or how we did create such a game and what to look out for and what the game design process is. Uh, so let's see how that goes. Um, and let's see how much I can get done for the game as well. Rina is a bit, little bit uh, tight on time. Then we have to see uh, when we see more of her beautiful character out. For now, we have to be set aside with Ruben and Felix and Beatrice. Let me know which one you would date or hold hands or befriend. Yeah, and I see you maybe tomorrow on the uh, YouTube stream, which will be on the Poly Pirates uh, channel this time. And otherwise, I will see you in two weeks for the next devlog. Um, if you have questions about the project or anything else, <laughs> um, yeah, let me know. I have to now play <laughs> with my dog. Otherwise, he will go crazy. Little crazy boy. All right. Have a good time until then. Bye bye.